Main man, made man here. Y'all know how I get down. We talking boxing, man. So it seems as if the latest tactic nowadays, ladies and gentlemen, ever, especially ever since like all of these cold wars ended, you know, and a lot of reason as of today why we're not getting a lot of fights is because what a lot of these fighters are tending to do now is the tactic they're choosing to employ when they really don't want to face a person. They're pricing themselves out of fights left and right. They want these humongous bags of money, knowing damn well the other person may not be a top draw. And so they ask for an astronomical amount of money, knowing that that other person cannot fit that bill. So they walk away from the fight looking like, hey, man, well, I wanted to fight him, but I just wasn't going to make any money there, man. Clearly covering themselves with that type of excuse and not thinking that it is a duck for those purposes. Now, I'm fully one to believe that if you are a champion or if you consider yourself a star in boxing, just being talented now ain't enough, man. It ain't enough no more. You know what I'm saying? You have to be not only good with your skills, but you got to have a sense of markability about yourself, man. It takes both of these things combined to, to produce a boxing star today, man. And this is the reason that if you guys have noticed right before the Carl Frampton and uh, Leo Santa Cruz fight, Gary Russell and Lee Selby was on a panel together. And now Lee Selby is the IBF featherweight champion. And Gary Russell is the WBC featherweight champion. And um, basically, Gary Russell can't wrap it around his head why Lee Selby ain't trying to fight him. Why Leo Santa Cruz ain't trying to fight him. Why Carl Frampton, newly crowned champion at 126, ain't thinking about him. Why is this, ladies and gentlemen? And I say to myself, Gary Russell is the WBC. Gary Russell said to Lee Selby on that same panel, you running around telling everybody the reason you won't fight me basically because I'm not known. And I'm paraphrasing it. I'm not known. Yet I hold the WBC money belt. I hold the most respected belt of any weight class, which is the WBC. And you claim you don't want to face me because I'm not popular enough. What kind of shit is that, right? You would thought that at one point in time that everyone who was a boxer, whatever weight class you fought in, you wanted that green belt, man. You wanted that WBC belt. But in today's boxing, in the post Pacquiao Mayweather fight era, you know what I'm saying? These motherfuckers want money. Fuck belts, fuck rankings, fuck standings, fuck legacy. I want money. If the money ain't in the bag, we got no fight. I don't care who you are. So when fighters get a lesser guy, and I hate to use this because this is a world-renowned example, but I, this, this is the first one that comes to mind. When Danny Garcia faced Rod Salker, he wanted a, he got over a million-dollar payday for that fight, right? So if they're going to fight lower-tier guys, they're still making a million dollars. Well, we have our Uncle Al Heyman to thank for that, ladies and gentlemen, by raising the prices of all of his fighters now having fighters price themselves out from other networks and other promoters you know what i mean we have uncle that was his model make no misunderstandings about it he said that from the beginning this is the reason why the pbc fighters get the fat checks because now they've priced themselves out of the market and so now these guys when they fight lower tier guys they want a million or better in a lot of cases nowadays so whenever they get in there with a dude who may be in their same weight class, a fellow champion, such as you have at 126, which you got with Gary Russell and Lee Selby. Instead of Lee Selby going for the most respected WBC belt, he like, fuck Gary Russell, man. I'm going over here to Carl Frampton where it would be a big fight in the UK. It'll be a big bag of money and it'll be a, a unification match which also would have been the case between him and Gary Russell. Now, take in mind, Lee Selby had no reason not to face Gary Russell uh, in the meantime, between time, before this fight, before the Leo Santa Cruz and Carl Frampton fight. Lee Selby and Gary Russell could have got it on then. But nothing happened. Nothing happened, ladies and gentlemen. So, you know, I don't know, you know, I, I don't understand what the call is. I, I, I'm... I'm still kind of catching up with the modern day boxer in a way that's chasing this bag of money when a lot of these guys just don't deserve it. But clearly, 
Gary Russell called out Lee Selby in front of the world and put it to his face right then and there. Now, I do respect the response of Lee Selby, and he responded extremely articulate. But I don't know, man. Is he right or is he wrong? Or am I wrong on here? I want to see him face Gary Russell Jr. I want to see all those 126 fighters face Gary Russell Jr. But however, Gary Russell isn't the most popular fighter. He's just not. He, he has all the skills in the world. I think he whitewashes all of their asses. I think he beats Cruz. I think he beats Frampton. I think Frampton gives him trouble, but I think he beats Frampton. I think he beats uh, Lee Selby. He beats all of these guys, man. You see what he did to Johnny Gonzalez. You know, the thing was, man, I think he beats. But bottom line is, I think he beats all of these guys, man. And these guys know it. So in order for them to take a fight with Russell, the bag has to be, the money has to be in the bag. And Gary Russell's popularity just don't allow the money to quite be in the bag. You know what I'm saying? We seen on that same panel that Gary Russell stated that, hey, man, me and Cruz or me and Lomachenko or him and Selby can get it on and they can promote the fight themselves. Clearly, promoters are giving Gary Russell fuckboy deals, low end numbers, and he is the WBC champion. Gary Russell done nothing wrong outside of losing to Lomachenko. He done nothing wrong. But even in that particular fight, he kind of won back a lot of his respect that he lost because... In the Lomachenko fight, man, he hit uh, he hit Lomachenko with everything but the kitchen sink. And Lomachenko didn't go down. This had people questioning Gary Russell Jr.'s power until he went up a division and destroyed Johnny Gonzalez and became the 126 WBC champion. When he destroyed him, I mean destroyed him, had everybody saying, well, I guess we were wrong. Maybe just Lomachenko just has a good chin. But Gary Russell definitely has power. He definitely has power. And Leo Santa Cruz, he already lost to Gary Russell in the amateurs. And he would clearly get outboxed by Gary Russell today. So he ain't losing if the check ain't fed enough. You know what I'm saying? He didn't expect to lose against Carl Frampton. He expected to steamroll Carl Frampton. You know what I'm saying? So in Gary Russell's case, man, none of these guys will fight him unless they are getting a major, major amount of money. I just don't see it. Now, to Lee Selby's point now. He did what he had to do in the UK. He built up his name. He built up a following. He built up a brand. And so did Carl Frampton. So he is saying, forget you, Gary Russell. I'm going to Carl Frampton. Unification match. The money is in the bag. The people want to see it. All the ingredients are there. I'll just wait on Carl Frampton. Is it not Gary Russell's responsibility then to get his marketability up? That's what these fighters got to understand. So I hear what Carl Frampton is saying. It's Gary Russell's responsibility to get out there and do what he has to do. Or his promoter or, or his manager or, or his trainer. Somebody from his team. Being skillful just isn't enough for today's boxer, man. Look at Rigo. Great boxer, man. Can't nobody touch him with a 10-foot pole for real, man. He will box the shit out of anyone. But guess what? Rico gets no love. Rico can't get a big fight for nothing, man. No matter how skilled he is. Reason being, his markability is shit. His markability is shit. No one don't know shit about Rigo, man. These fighters are now obligated to do that because... Another marketable fighter wants to fight another marketable fighter. It doesn't care how much jewelry is around his waist. It doesn't care. They don't care about legacy points and rankings and standings and shit. That shit don't mean jack shit. Once I establish my name, no matter how I establish my name, I could be established just for trash talking. Look at Adrian Bronner. I could be an established guy just for knocking out people. Look at Gennady Golovkin. I can establish my name just by outboxing folks. Look at Mayweather. You know what I mean? No matter how you establish it, once you get that name, you want to face people that has names also. You know what I'm saying? But what, what, what makes me upset is that when you get another guy with a name and then you price yourself out the fucking fight or you get another guy that is definitely on your level, but then you price yourself out of the fight. Well, then if I'm going to face him, the price goes up four or five million dollars. You see what I'm saying? Clearly, this was a, a, a happening with Kell Brook before he chose to take the Gennady Golovkin fight. Jesse Vargas wanted to face him, making $2 million of, from what we were hearing. Kell Brook only making 200000 
That's what Kell Brook had to sacrifice in order to get that fight with Jesse Vargas. Jesse Vargas, and then Kell Brook and Eddie Hearn came to their senses like, oh, fuck no. Oh, fuck no. Why am I going to give this guy all this money? For what? He pricing himself out. Chris Eubanks Jr. just did the same shit to Gennady Golovkin. Asking for $4 million when he ain't done jack shit. You know what I'm saying? Oh, well, if you're going to pay this money, I'll take it. And if I lose, at least I'm $4 million richer, right? Ain't take, ain't jack jack shit. So, like I said before, especially with the PBC fighters, this is a definite ongoing thing. This is the reason why we never got a Peter Quillen versus, say, a Gennady Golovkin. Because Quillen has always priced himself out. He always said, I need a certain amount of money if I'm going to step in there with Gennady Golovkin. That's what they do. And so in Gary Russell's case, he needs to recognize that, man. Him trying to cut the promoter out of the way is just one way to kind of enhance that bag of money. But he's got to put the markability with it. He got to sell himself, man. He needs to get in front of these cameras, talk a little more trash. According to Gary Russell, man, he doesn't even know about a lot of these guys because he don't even watch boxing. He, 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 he wraps himself into his family life and doesn't doing things for his family, which is a commendable and great, great thing. But it kind of leaves his career kind of hanging in the balance because there's not much talk or promotion going on when it comes to Gary Russell. Even though, make no misunderstandings about it, just like Regan Dow down at 122, I think Gary Russell beats everyone at 126. No ifs, ands, or buts with Carl Frampton being the toughest fight at 126, at least as of this time. And that's just what I say. And uh, according to Gary Russell, man, you know, after he finished, if he can get a fight with any of these pussies at 126, he is then leaving and he is heading his ass up to go hunt down Lomachenko. Hunt his ass down. And Gary Russell need to get on his put his foot on the gas when it comes to this because Lomachenko is getting better every fucking fight, man. This dude is running through divisions. He's hunting down champions. He's knocking these motherfuckers out. And Gary Russell need to get to this guy fast. You know what I'm saying? fucking fast but i hope one of the champions at 126 give my dude gary russell man a chance and give him a chance to unify and become a unified champion and uh i know these dudes are just pussy and they're, and they're afraid of the dude and let's just be honest i'm not saying that just because i'm from dc i'm giving it the eye test and i'm looking at this thing and i'm saying gary russell he is just too fucking fast for everyone at 126 man just too fast and he has good power he just will outbox these guys man and these guys either going to price themselves out or they're not going to give my guy a fucking fair shot man simple as that man to the next video main man made man don't forget to subscribe twitter made man 511 facebook main man made man boxing forum google plus main man made man you know the question then has has to be uh, is what Lee Selby or what Lee Selby said it did, is that considered a duck? To be quite frankly, I can't say that. And I, I, like I said before, man, I understand exactly where Lee Selby is coming. He established his name in the UK. Carl Frampton did the same thing. They not only became champions, but they became marketable champions. And uh, given that that's what they did and they put that type of work in, they deserve each other and they deserve the money that comes with the bag. And unfortunately... It hurts me to say it. I hold my, I close my eyes and I hold my nose, but I understand exactly where Lee Selby is coming from. But don't think for a second that Lee Selby beats Gary Russell because the answer to that, it's hell no. It's fucking hell no. But I understand. Until the next video, peace out.